And that is why it's so unique, the case, because so many circumstances, accidental circumstances, that I, uh, I think are going to be very difficult to be repeated. All that really make me wonder why so many people have been attacking the case in the internet. When I read about Harold Chacon, they said that he was a hoax, he never studied at the university, he didn't have any degree, and we were, when we were able to talk to him, listen to him, uh, the way he did it convinced us that there is, some, there is something else around the case. I mean, there are many people who don't want you to believe in this case. And I think probably you shouldn't believe any, everything that is said here, but everything that is proved, I think you should at least investigate. Because the problem here, I became involved with this case. I am a Mexican. I don't have anything to do with this. I, don't, I didn't have anything to do with Jonathan. None of the great investigators of this country, because there are some that I have a big respect for them. But none of them wanted to investigate the case. None of them wanted to get involved with the case. They thought it was too dangerous to do it because credibility could be lost or probably even integrity or physical danger. But they didn't want to do it. And that's why I did it. I'm a, I am afraid. I am afraid, probably I would be more afraid if I live here in the U.S., but I am afraid I have security now in my house, 24 hours a day, especially because I travel so much and my family is alone. Uh, but I don't think anything will happen to me. I am very well known in Mexico, very public. Then uh, I think it's going to be very difficult to, especially because I, will, I went to television with Jonathan Reed. And this program got la some like 60 points share, if you know what that means. I mean, it was watched almost by the whole country. I am talking by millions and millions of people. Then the Mexican people know more about the Jonathan Reed case than, than the United States people. And that is not fair. That is not fair to you. But that's the real thing. I mean, in Mexico, we were able, the television took the case and presented the case. There is not a single channel, a single program, television program, who had been interested in the case to present it in television. And I don't understand why. Now I want to, to present you some of the evidences that I have, and that's why I I think this case is real. As I said, I'm back. What we have done here, I back it 100%. This is what I know. Then let me present you. First, let's put the video number one, please. Uh, Dan Aria wanted to put the, the video, the original video for the last part. If, but did you allow me? We can present it now. This is what I saw when I came here. Louder. He calls Susie. Did you hear? Come on, come on. This is important. We are investigating this distortion because the distortion is produced by the magnetism of the object, and it's almost ready. The analysis of this video. 
But I can tell you that a very strong source was responsible for the distortion. It was not artificially made. Something affected the tape. When he went away from the object, the object was, the, the video was okay. This is what really amazed me. You have a laser? This is what I saw a year ago that brought my attention. Looked to the face. You see the eyes? You can see how it closes and opens the eye. And we, have, we can see this a little bit open. Okay, let's make a close-up. Look how it's blinking very clearly. It proved to me that this being was alive. Rodolfo Garrido, the man who mentioned Dan McEvoy, who works at the Institute of Advanced Studies of NASA, told me the only way this being could be alive at that moment is that he has to have technology in the brain, nanotechnology in the brain. I was amazed when we found that the analysis of Harold Chacon found, and, and Roger Haggett and Michael Wessels found nanotechnology in this brain. It means this is a biotechnological being. It means that many of the creatures that we have been seeing are robots or androids or whatever you want to call them. This is the link. We also found, well, Harold Chacon told us to, they found that the blood had no uh, white cells, no uh, antibodies, no, no defenses at all. Uh, uh, here you can see clearly like uh, why we call these nanotubes, carbon nanotubes, like those have, have been developed by NASA. And Rodolfo told me, that is nanotechnology, Jaime. And you know what? Uh, they say in the internet that this is foam. And what really disturbed me is that they have never seen the link as we did. They have never. And they were able just through pictures say that that was foam. How can they? How can they dare to, to say it? I mean, that's the bad thing with investigation in, in, in ufology. Many people never investigate. Now internet is a very good source to investigate. It's like me investigating the crop circles just through internet. I couldn't talk about crop circles until I am there and I can find out. That's why Colin Andrews is very important because he is the source. We also found in the blood oxygen, well, I didn't, they did. Oxygen, uh, hierro, iron, that's why it's red. Uh, the nucleus of the, AD, of the DNA is in the red cells, like uh, in the sea turtles, like uh, Dan Iria mentioned. This, these are the needles, huge needles, big needles, painful for a little while, according to Jonathan.